Good morning, brothers and sisters. Brother Will here. Uh, before I go any further, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, so, uh, sorry, I was trying to give the chickens their moment so that I could uh, do this video under a little quieter circumstances, but we just got a lot of hallelujahs and amens over here from the uh, peanut gallery of chickens. Um, I'll check the volume, hopefully it's okay. So I want to share with you a very quick dream that I had uh, three mornings ago, that was Sunday morning. Um, also want to address something in, in the current events that you just saw happen, and because I think it's absolutely significant. And um, if we have time, share a couple of scriptures uh, with regard to how they, I, I think, how they absolutely speak of rapture. So um, first of all, the dream. So it was super quick. Um, I had already woken up and gone back to sleep Sunday morning. Um, it was almost like I would say a vision, except that my head was down in the pillow, so I wasn't like open-eyed or anything. But um, all it was, was I heard a voice saying something to the effect of, this isn't verbatim, but um, Daddy, come look out the window. Daddy, come look out the window is what it basically was like. So I go, and the entire dream is I pull the curtain to my sliding door off of my um, deck, pull the curtain to look out the sliding door, and it's complete, like, a war zone. Like, a bomb went off, like, um, a hurricane, earthquake, anything. It, pick, choose your natural disaster, but trees, you know, strewn all over the place, um, debris, everything. And the weirdest part was, um, the only thing that was on the deck that I recognized was this old grill. Not my own grill, but from like the 80s, like my dad's grill from when I was growing up. Um, and it was just like tossed on the side and disheveled and everything. Um, and so, um, and that was it. That was the entire scene. Um, and my actual grill is like a solid like 20 yards or so from my, from my actual deck. But um, anyway, sent that uh, brother, all, all the three brothers I'm on the text chain with told him my dream and Kevin came back immediately with um, just uh, well I had already gotten the sense as well that I was you know in a protected place like viewing the chaos from a safe place so to me that that speaks of we're all going to be in a safe place if you have given your life and, and you have received um, from Jesus what he has given you the life he's given you if you laid down your life for him and, and received his life and believed and trusted on the one name under heaven whereby whereby we must be saved, um, then you too will be in a safe place. If you have confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen, hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus. It has nothing to do with, with how I've earned anything or my very small amount of good deeds that are basically dust in the wind that are worthless um, but the other good news about the gospel is it also doesn't depend on all the mistakes you've made whatever the mistake you've made in your life if you haven't given your life to Christ if you're a person that says you know what I can't be redeemed I'm too far gone I've, I've messed up too many times I've had too many chances well then I'm telling you right now that's a lie that's a lie from the enemy right now today is a day of salvation Jesus is telling you he's knocking on the door of your heart He's, he's telling you, I died for you. Receive my free gift. Okay, so do that, brother or sister. And I call you, who hasn't even believed yet, brother or sister, I call you that in faith. So, um, anyway. If you believed, you will be in a safe place through the tribulation. Okay, so I, I got that myself from the dream. But Kevin also pointed out that... Um, you know, the, the daddy come look out the window, that also implied that where are we? We're in the father's house. And um, it was interesting that uh, he, he also pointed out that um, my age was, um, in the 80s, was I was also not of, um, I was not 18 yet. And he used like uh, a couple of verses from Genesis um, talking about how long, it was, I think, Genesis 2, 17. Um, I can't remember exactly now. I lost that part. <laughs> I have to go back and look. Anyway, really, really cool dream. Really um, encouraging. Hope it encourages you as well. And just add it to the 
thousands and thousands upon dreams that all the believers across the world are getting. Holy Spirit is being poured out on all flesh, and, you know, all, a lot of them are warning dreams, a lot of them are comforting dreams, and this was kind of both. It was, if you are with him, if you are in the Lord Jesus, if you are one with him, you're going to be in a safe place while all the turmoil happens. And I believe that <laughs> that is coming very soon. Amen. Um, the other thing was, uh, I wanted to address, if you saw the Twitter, what cha how they changed their symbol from a bluebird tweeting Twitter to a black and white X. There's nothing, there's nothing at all that uh, the, the two have in common, as far as I can tell. However, X is not even, I don't even believe that's what the symbol is. If you look at how it's drawn and everything else, I think it's the Greek letter Chi which is the 22nd letter of the Greek alphabet. And in the Greek numeral system, not Roman numerals, Greek numerals, it actually means the number 600. So um, if you go back and look at some of my older videos from especially like 2020, 2021, there's a couple of them where I talk about breaking the enemy's end time deception. And I talk about where John says the number of the beast has, has to be calculated and that it is 600, three score, and six. You have to calculate it. I don't think anyone's gonna be walking around with the numbers 666 on the forehead ever. I think it's gonna be a symbol, a, you know, something that is a little less obvious that you're gonna to have to, as John says, calculate. So, um, not saying Twitter is the number of the beast, but what I am saying is that that number 600 is significant. Also, the 22nd letter of the Greek alphabet, I believe, is also significant because 22 is a number of chaos. Um, a lot of the evil kings in um, Israel's past reigned for 22 years. One of them reigned for a lot less, but he was 22 years old. So we have this kind of... Um, and, by the way, some people like to say that Xmas, you know, like... The, you know, one of the secular culture calls Christmas, Xmas, that, um, you know, they're, they're saying that it's Christ, that it's the Greek letter for Christ. Well, we know that the name under heaven whereby must, all must be saved is Jesus, the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. We know there is a false Christ, a false, because Christ means Messiah. We know there is a false Messiah coming into the world that are that's going to deceive the whole world, right? except for you tribulation saints who are left hopefully watching this video and encouraging you as well. Um, but, so, I, I believe there's the 22 number, because it's the 22 letter, 22nd letter of the Greek alphabet. I believe Chi, again, it's the 600th, it represents 600 in the Greek numeral system. And then also in the Illuminati, um, at the, I, I found that at the 17th, uh, whatever they call them, when, when you're 17th degree or whatever, there's this whole ceremony where they cross white and black cords. And if you look at the Twitter, it's a white and black, white and black X. And they cross those cords and it means like transformation or something. Cause it's a, it's a big, it's a big deal to Freemasons and Illuminati and that sort of thing. In addition, I found that um, X is uh, big in the, in the Egyptian uh, false gods where they, you know, the pharaohs, when they died, they had their arms crossed and um, the whole X is over their eyes and everything else. Um, so I, I don't, who's to say what it actually means. I just know that there's a lot of bad possibilities. <laughs> um, and given, you know, that it is a big part of cultural part of this world, the whole social media and everything else doesn't surprise me. Um, so I just wanted to call your attention to it. It's not some random X. And even whatever they tell you that it means, it means something a lot deeper and a lot more sinister, I guarantee you that. So, um, yeah, just wanted to bring your attention to that. And then finally, uh, this is another scripture that um, the Lord had been laying on my heart, which kind of goes with Titus 2.13. Let me just read Titus 2.13 to you again, because I know um, Brother Chad and um, several other watchmen uh, quote this a lot. Looking for that blessed hope. Actually, let me back it up a couple of verses just so we can get the full context. Um, Titus 2.11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing 
of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. So again, redeem us from all iniquity. If you have put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, all of your sins, past, present, and future, have been redeemed, paid for, covered by his blood. If you haven't believed on him yet, all of your sins will be paid for and covered by his blood the moment you believe, the moment you put your trust and faith in him. Um, but anyway, blessed hope. We've heard that a lot of times. And the uh, scripture that the Lord's putting on my heart that I that I went and looked up, and I also I shared this with Brother Kevin as well, Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. And so we know there's a lot of us uh, that have been watching and waiting and watching and waiting for several years now. And our hope may seem like it has been deferred, but um, we have all the more reason to hope this week, today, tomorrow, every day coming up because it, it's not going to be deferred. It's not going to be deferred. And the end result will be a tree of life and Kevin pointed this out. This is amazing. So Tree of Life, it is in, it's mentioned 12 times in scripture. And it's interesting that it's mentioned 12 times because of this verse I'm about to read where it talks about the number 12 with regard to the Tree of Life. Um, but in the last chapter of scripture, Revelation 22, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and out of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So again, the tree of life, let me read it again in context with this Proverbs thirteen twelve: Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. And what is that desire? What is our hope? The Lord Jesus himself. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're coming. You're coming for your people. And when you do, it's going to be a tree of life for all eternity, for the healing of the nations, brothers and sisters. Um, yeah, I have, I have something else to share with you, but I'll let this, I'll let this be it for now. Um, I have another story, so um, a biblical story that I think is also applicable to, applicable to these days. And um, yeah, so hopefully I'll have time to do another video or actually hopefully I won't have time to do another video because hopefully I'll just be meeting you all in the clouds. But um, anyway, be blessed, be encouraged. Thank you for all of your encouragement to me in the comments. And um, yeah, each one of you is such a blessing. I look forward to dining with you all at the uh, wedding supper of the lamb, at the banquet at the master's table. And uh, May the Lord bless you and keep you until then. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yes, thank you. And as we always say on this channel, in all that we say and do, may the Lord Jesus be magnified. Amen.